Sutra. What is the Bodhisattva's present giving? This Bodhisattva's hear about the amount of merit and virtue the gods in the heaven of the four heavenly kings are replete with, as well as those in the heaven of the thirty-three, the Suyama heaven, the Tushita heaven, the heaven of the transformation of bliss, the heaven of the comfort from others' transformations. Commentary. When forest of merit and virtue Bodhisattva had finished speaking of the future giving of the Bodhisattva, he again put forth the question and answers it himself. He says, What is the Bodhisattva's present giving? What was spoken of before was past and future giving, but what is the present giving cultivated by the great Bodhisattvas? What follows now is in answer to the question. When these Bodhisattvas hear about the amount of merit and virtue of gods, the gods in the heaven of the four heavenly kings are replete with the four heavenly kings are the heavenly king maintaining the country, the heavenly king great learning, the heavenly king broad eyes, the heavenly king increasing and growing. There are limitless gods in the heaven of the four kings. Each of these kings lead a multitude of gods, as well as those in the heaven of the thirty-three. The heaven of the thirty-three is a translation of the Sanskrit name Chajas Chimsha, whose those who rule the heaven of the thirty-three in the past were thirty-three women. Together, they all brought forth a resolve to restore a temple that had been destroyed. From the merit and virtue they accrued from restoring this temple, they were reborn in the heaven of the thirty-three, and became the rulers of it. The Suyama heaven is the heaven of well-divided time. The Tushita heaven is the heaven of contentment. The Bodhisattva, who is to be the next Buddha to appear in the world, waits in the inner court of the Tushita heaven until the time is right. It is the same for every Buddha to be. Therefore, this heaven is also called the place of the successor. In the next life, the Bodhisattva waiting in the inner court of the Tushita heaven will succeed the present Buddha and become the next Buddha. The heaven of the transformation of bliss. This heaven is extremely blissful. There are all kinds of blissful transformations. The heaven of the comfort from others' transformations. There's also a heaven called the comfort from others' transformations. There, the gods rely on others' bliss in order to become blissful themselves. They rely on the bliss of other heavens for their own bliss. Sutra. The heavens of Brahma, the Brahma body heaven, the heaven of the ministers of Brahma, the heaven of the mantitus of Brahma, the great Brahma heaven, the heavens of light, the lesser light heaven, the limitless light heaven, the light south heaven. Commentary: When compared with the human realm, the heavens are very different. In the heavens, everyone is very blissful and extremely happy. Therefore, one day and night in the heaven of the four kings is equivalent to fifty years in the human world. One day and one night in our human world is equivalent to fifty years in the house. Why is it this way? Because in the house there is so much suffering that the inhabitants feel the time goes by slowly and seems longer. Where happiness exists, people feel that the time passes quickly and so seems shorter. For this reason, in the heaven of the four kings, the heaven located above us, one day and night is equal to fifty years in our human world. This that is because they are very blissful when compared to the human realm, which is full of suffering. One day and night in the Chayashimsha heaven corresponds to one hundred years in our human realm. The time it takes for a day and night to pass in our world increases to longer and longer periods of time, in correspondence to how high up the heavens are. If We were to continue deducing in this manner. 
By the time we reach the heaven of neither thought nor non-thought, one day and night, by their reckoning, would correspond to millions of great compass of our time, that long time. The heavens of Brahma, the Brahma body heaven, the heaven of the ministers of Brahma, in these heavens they are pure cultivators. The heaven of the mantitos of Brahma, the great Brahma heaven, the king of this heaven is really comfortable and independent. The heaven of light, in these heavens the gods speak, the Dharma by means of light. The lesser light heaven, the limitless light heaven, the light south heaven. According to Buddhist sutras, the people of our world originally descended from the light south heaven. The beings in this heaven are to light light as south. They use the light to speak the Dharma. Originally, the beings of the light south heaven came to our earth. Because they were heavenly, they could fly, so they flew from the light south heaven down to our earth. In the beginning, our world was covered with the fat of land. Fat of the land, which was kind of like the cotton candy that we have today. It was really sweet and delicious. In the light south heaven, they didn't have this delicacy, so they went, they came to the earth, they thought it was really good. They were just like kids being treated to candy, and they ate one piece after one another. After the heavenly beings had eaten a bit of the fat of the land, they could no longer fly. It is said that this is the way the world became inhabited by human beings. Was it really this way? It doesn't matter. It's not important. If it were this way, so what? If it weren't this way, so what? For those who really want to cultivate, it's better to take care of your own affairs first and then worry about their uh, other affairs. If you meddle into other business before you have settled your own affairs, then whatever knowledge you come by is false and empty. So people who have to study this and study that, who must research into one field and research into an another, uh, another field, just keep investigating on and on until they die. And after they die, they forget all the research they have done. Then, when they become human beings again, they start doing this kind of researching all over again. They do research again, but they still can't get everything cleared up before they die again. So, if viewed from this perspective, it's far better to study the problem of life and death. How did we get born and how will we die? We have to clarify where we came from and where we are going. This is important. Sutra, the heavens of purity, the heaven of blessed purity, the heaven of limitless purity, the heaven of pervasive purity, the heavens of abundance, the heaven of lesser abundance, the heaven of limitless abundance, the heaven of abundant fruit, the heaven of no afflictions, the heaven of no heat, the good view heaven, the good manifestation heaven, the heaven of ultimate form, and so forth, up to and including sound hearers and those enlightened conditions who are replete with merit and virtue. After hearing about this, their minds are neither confused nor depressed, nor do they become obsessed by or scattered by all of this. They merely contemplate own practices as being like a dream that lacks any reality and they have no greed or attachment toward them. It is for the sake of causing living beings to renounce and leave the evil destinies, to have their minds become free from discriminations, to cultivate the Bodhisattva path and accomplish the Buddha dharmas that they speak and explain. This is called present giving. Commentary In the first dhyana, there are three heavens. In the second dhyana and third dhyana, there are also three heavens. In the fourth dhyana, there are nine heavens. These are the four dhyana heavens. The heavens of purity, these heavens are even more pure than the Brahma heavens mentioned before. The heaven of blessed purity, the heaven of limitless purity, the heaven of pervasive purity. In the heaven of blessed purity, 
Although it is very pure, it is not a perfect purity. In the heaven of limitless purity, the purity is more perfect and it is limitless, but not all pervasive. In the heaven of pervasive purity, the purity is all pervasive and universal. The heavens of abundance, the heaven of lesser abundance, the heaven of limitless abundance, the heaven of ab abundant fruit. In each case, in the text above, the sets of three heavens are introduced with a general reference to the kinds of heavens, such as the heavens of abundance. Now we go on to single heavens, no longer sets of three. The heaven of no afflictions. Not only is this heaven pure, but the gods who inhabit it have no troubles, no afflictions. The heaven of no heat. In this heaven, it is always cool and clear. Heat can also mean noise or heated afflictions. This heat can refer to the fact that in one's nature there is fire. The heat of afflictions no longer blocks these gods. The good view heaven, the good manifestation heaven, the heaven of ultimate form. In this heaven, form does not exist anymore, and so forth, up to and including sound hearers and those enlightened to conditions who are replete with merit and virtue. The Bodhisattvas contemplate the merit and virtue of all those heavenly beings as well as sound hearers and those enlightened to conditions. After hearing about this, all these merit and virtue, their minds are neither confused nor depressed, nor do they become obsessed by or scattered by all of these. These different kinds of states of the gods don't confuse the bodhisattvas, nor they do get depressed and sink into these states, nor do they constantly pay attention to them and become attached to them, nor are they thoughts scattered by these states. They merely contemplate all practices as being like a dream that lacks any reality, as it is said, all activity is impermanent. This is the drama of production and extinction. When production and extinction are extinguished, still extinction is bliss. Ultimate still extinction is happiness, so they contemplate that all practices are just like dreams and are not real, and they have no greed or attachment toward them. The Bodhisattvas remain free of attachment to all the states they have, we have talked about, all of the blissful states of the heavens. It is for the sake of causing living beings to renounce and leave the evil destinies that the Bodhisattvas speak the Dharma. They want living beings to abandon and depart from the four evil destinies of the house, hungry ghosts, animals, and asuras. They want to help their minds become free from discriminations to cultivate the Bodhisattva path. They want living beings to cultivate the Bodhisattva way to benefit other living beings in turn and accomplish the Buddha dharmas. They want them to succeed in all of the dharmas to which the Buddhas attain. It is for the reason that they speak and explain. They speak the Buddha dharma for the sake of all living beings. This is called present giving. The text we have just covered by uh, is the dharma of present giving.